All right, so I'm going to get started here by showing you JS lint first, and we just need a sample file, just create an a.js file here. And we need a function that I know uh, isn't going to pass. So I'll create a function that says, we'll say add two, and it'll take two parameters first and the second. And other than that, uh, let's have it return immediately. And let's also add uh, a equals one at the end. Again, clearly wrong. If I hop over to my terminal window, you can just type JS lint and then the name of the file, a.js. And immediately without any configuration, it's told us there are lots of things wrong with our file. So right up at the top, you'll see uh, it doesn't like that I have a semi, that I'm missing my semicolons. It knows that I have an A variable. Actually, let me just bring the window over here a little bit so that you can see both side by side by side. It knows that I have a variable A that is after the return statement, so it'll never get used. It knows that it, I'm missing a semicolon there. And it knows that I have two functions, uh, or rather two parameters to this function, first and second, that aren't being used at all in the function. So let me delete what I have here and see if we can get this to pass. I'll just return first plus second. Again, this would be a function that maybe would add two numbers together. And if I run it again, oh, sorry, I need to save real quick. If I run it again, you'll see here uh, missing, I'm down to just the first error there, the uh, requirement that I use strict. I'll add that here. Save, go back over. And now the last thing, it's now picked up on the fact that I need to indent exactly four spaces. So again, another hard requirement of JS lint that I indent four. I'll save, head back over, and a.js is okay. So now I've, I've passed my linting with JS lint. So next up here, let's just reset back to where we started. And again, we have our function here that uh, we don't want to pass our linting, and we'll try JS hint. So we'll type JS hint a.js. And immediately you'll see it doesn't give back uh, everything that JS lint did. It just says that we're missing a couple semicolons. So JS hint expects that you're going to customize things the way that are proper for your project. And the easiest way to do that is with one of these JS hint RC files. And you need that dot at the beginning as well. And it's just in the JSON format. So we'll add a couple in here. We'll say undef is true. We'll say unused is true and we'll say ASI is true. And what that is is we're saying we don't want any undefined variables, we don't want any variables that go unused, and ASI says that we want semicolons. So now if we save that and come back over, run again, it'll pick up on that file and we get four errors instead of two. So it's uh, picking up on the fact that we don't have, uh, that we're not using some of these variables. Let's set it back to something that we know works properly. So we'll just return first plus second Again, this is a function we're saying that we just add two numbers together. We'll save that. And if we come back over to the window, run it again, it'll pick up on the fact that add two isn't defined. Add two is the function that we created here in the file and it rightfully says that we haven't used it. So we can fix that easily enough. We can just call add two in this function. Uh, and we don't have to pass any parameters in there, but we will. And I'll click save, go back over and we get no output, and no output means everything successfully passed. So next here I just want to show you that we could also add another JS hint RC file. So if, let's take for example, you have a test folder, maybe this is where your unit tests run, and those unit tests have different requirements possibly than what your main source code does. So if we create another file here, I'll just create a b.js, and let's just add a function in here uh, just to illustrate uh, maybe a sample test and we'll call it test add two. And uh, actually, I need to uh, need to add the word function on top of this up here. Uh, create it as a function, and we'll just say that it returns true. So now, if I save this here, and I go back, I'll clear my window here, and I run JS hint again. Uh, actually, I need to pass in explicitly our test b.js. Just takes a running list of, of files at the end. It'll say that our test add two is defined but never used, but maybe we want that. Maybe that's appropriate for our test suite. So what we can do is within the test folder, we can create another .js hint RC file, and JS hint will look for the JS hint RC file that's closest to it in the tree. So we'll say undefined false here, saying that we don't care whether the variable is undefined. Run it again. Now it picks on the fact that we also have a missing semicolon. So we can go back over to b.js, add a semicolon in, run it again, and no output. 
meaning everything was successful. Okay, and last up here, we're going to take a look at uh, ESLint. So I'll reset everything back to where it was, and I'll type ESLint a.js, and we get an error. And we get an error because ESLint expects that you're going to have a configuration file, and without it, it has no presets, it has no defaults. So it lets you know that you need a configuration file and even provides a nice little hint here saying that you type ESLint dash dash init and it will help you create that file. So let's go ahead and do that. And you get a little uh, up and down arrow here. So we'll say we'll answer questions about your style. Hit enter. And we're not using uh, ES6. Uh, this is not in the browser. We'll say this is in Node. Uh, we're not using JSX, which is what React uses. We like spaces and I prefer single quotes and we're in a Unix environment and I do like semicolons so let's output that in JavaScript format it does give you a few formats here but we'll go with JavaScript and now you see it's created a .eslintrc.js file in the root of our project and it follows the same module.exports it also knows up here that we're in a node environment and it has this nice feature where it's extending from some ESLint presets. And so the, the rules below are really just where we've deviated from that recommended settings from, from ESLint. So we say that we want to indent four spaces, we picked a Unix environment, single spaces, and we want semicolons. So if I hop back over here to my terminal window, we can clear this and I can run ESLint a.js now. And we should get better output here. And let me just extend the window a little bit so that you can see. But already you can see the output's much nicer than it was before. We get some nice color in the terminal. And it's giving us a very explicit output over on the right in terms of what's wrong with our function. So let me just clear this. Again, we'll set it back to what we know works. We're adding two numbers together. Click Save. And let's see how we are in ESLint now. So we're down to two. It knows that add two is defined but not used. And we did say that we wanted four spaces, but we found two. So I'll just add two here. I'll add a few spaces there. Click Save, go back over. I'm actually not sure if I did four spaces or five. I did five, so I'll remove the fifth and run it one more time. And we get no output, and no output means everything successfully passed. So the last thing that I want to show you here is if I just clear my terminal window and I'll just reset everything back to where we started, where we have some rules that aren't passing. Our ESLint RC file uh, is very easy to edit. So we'll say we don't want four spaces, we want two. And let's say for semicolons, we care, but we don't want it to break our build. So instead of everything erroring out, we can have it set to a warning, which means it'll pass through if we have some sort of continuous build integration it'll return a um, it'll return a success to the command line but it will warn so we'll set a one so zero means off one means warn two means error so if we run it again you'll see in our output here our missing semicolons only get warnings but it hasn't broken our build so this is useful for things that you care a little bit about but you don't want to stop production or stop a deploy just because it's wrong